Welcome, NBA world. As you know, the Joker, Nikola Jokic, wins his first NBA championship. And ever since that happened, which was over 24 plus hours now, a lot of talk that I hear about is where he ranks amongst all-time centers. Well, I'm here to tell you that's completely irrelevant, right? That narrative is only pushed because if you look at him winning a championship as a whole, and where does that place him on an all-time players list, it's going to be low. So low to a point that it's not going to be debatable. It could be 35, 38, probably 40, right? And nobody's going to sit here and debate with you your top 40, right? Nobody walks up to somebody and say, hey, dog, what's your top 50 greatest basketball players of all time? No, we want to know the top five or top ten minimum, right? That's it. That's all we want to know. So, with that being said, the real question that we should be asking as the Joker wins his first championship, very similar to Giannis winning his first championship, is, for the Joker, the narrative around it is, are you the best player in the world if you're the Joker? Is he number one just because he won the championship? <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm here to tell you the answer to that is no. The Joker is not the best player in basketball, right? Now, keep in mind, when Giannis won his first championship, he was already called the best player in basketball. But a championship does solidify it. But the Joker was never called the best player in the world. But he was called the top five player in the world. And he was a top five player, though, by default. Okay? Now, being a top five player by default is not the same as being, hands down, nine out of ten times from people considered the best player or a top five player in the world. That wasn't the Joker. The Joker always had that stigma around him that you're only on his list because a lot of guys are injured or hurt. So he had to prove to the world that, hey, I deserve to be a top five player. And that's what this championship does. It gives him right to be called the top five player in the world. It also gives him right to say that he's better than Joel B. No questions asked. That's the pros of it. Top five, better than Joel B. But... This does not make him the best basketball player in the world. Giannis is a more dominant scorer, a better defensive player, just as good as a better rebounder. And I would give the edge to rebounding to Giannis because he gets in there and, you know, he bangs. So Giannis still is a better basketball player than the Joker. Even a guy like LeBron James. Now, hear me out a little bit. LeBron James, a guy that said he was better than 95% in the NBA. Old, new money, old money. LeBron James is still better than the Joker. Even now, he's still a better basketball player. You can still make a case. And I know that sounds crazy because look at it like this. The Joker's not a good defender. LeBron's not a good defender. But if you had to pick who's the better defender, I'm going with LeBron. Okay? Even at age 38. The score, LeBron James is just as good of a score as the Joker is, if not better. And I could make a case that he's a more diverse scorer compared to the Joker. The Joker's a better in-post score because he has all those post-up moves. But LeBron James is better at shooting the three ball. He's a better mid-range shooter. He's a better attacker of the basket. LeBron James is just a better scorer than the Joker. And that's just, it is what it is on that aspect. So, the only thing you can make a case for is the Joker being a better passer. But LeBron James' best feature as a basketball player is passing. So, if the Joker is a better passer than LeBron James, that makes LeBron James an overrated passer. Right? So, we can't give him the passing edge over LeBron James because LeBron James is perceived as Magic Johnson-like when it comes to passing. So, even in that case... You're going to still find some people that just find the flat out dank that there's other players better than the Joker. And you can still make a case 
I know he lost, but you can still make a case KD is a better basketball player than the Joker. There's a lot of guys that you can make a case for being better than the Joker. It's not clear cut. Giannis is clear cut best player in the world. Now, this brings me to my last topic. Congratulations to the Denver Nuggets, by the way. But I want to say this about you guys. You winning a championship doesn't mean you're some type of dynasty in the making. Teams are going to get better. You're a small market team. You're going to fall in line with Milwaukee Bucks, the Denver Nuggets. You guys fall in line with the same criteria. You don't get that much money to keep those players because those players are going to get hot now. The media is going to be all over them. Other teams and scouts are going to want to trade for those guys. And when those guys become free agents, other teams are going to offer them the bag because they won a championship. Usually when teams win a championship, the role players get offered twice as much money from other teams and they end up leaving. This is why it's hard to repeat because a lot of teams don't come back with their same roster. They come back with their main core two players or sometimes five players. But the whole team as a whole is never complete. So this is the problem with the Denver Nuggets. Jamal Murray, who's to say when time, his time comes that he won't sign a max contract somewhere else if Denver don't do it, right? What about Michael Porter Jr., guy that was on the trading block? He could very well leave the Nuggets and go and sign with another team. That's not too far, far away from thinking, right? So I doubt that team even be in, intact to win multiple championships. This could be a one and done for the Joker. He's 28 years old. This is his, um, he's a five-time, I'm um, six-time or five-time All-Star, right? He became an All-Star in 2019. <clears throat> so it took him five years to hit his prime to become an All-Star. But with that being said, he may be the only guy left that they really open the bank for. Okay, I'm, I don't know if they're going to be able to keep a guy like Jamal Murray. All right? Or even Michael Porter Jr. Causes the Denver Nuggets. All right? Players just leave small market teams like that and go with a grass is greener to a more bigger franchise. That's just a, the pros and cons of playing pro basketball when you're a small market. And when this new CBA kicks in, Milwaukee Bucks, Denver Nuggets, all the small market teams are going to be hurting. The only team that's going to benefit for the new CBA is the big market teams, the Lakers, the Knicks, the Celtics. And don't sleep on those guys. They're going to get better. All right. There's over nine title contenders in the Western Conference. So pump the brakes from thinking that the Nuggets going to repeat. This may be the only championship. So if you're a Denver Nuggets fan, the very few of you enjoy this championship because it may be your last. But nevertheless, congratulations to Denver. Sports out. Peace.